Testing, oh, it's working. All right, so doors closed. Um, thank you for coming. I heard there are some other panels happening right now. So thank you for coming to my panel. Um, hopefully I can keep you entertained for 50 minutes or so. Um, so uh, I've put a hashtag there at the bottom. If you want to tweet anything about it, um, use a hashtag or at me or it's all the other ones if you want. Um, I just wanted to make it easy and it's on every panel slide. So if you forget, it's there easy to find. So yeah, if anything to talk about or nice photos, you know, send them so I can uh, see them because it's really cool seeing things play out. Um, so uh, just a quick little background on me. So I've been a web developer for seven years. I've most of that development has been while working out of Darwin. Um, so very, I suppose you call it indie web development in a sense. Um, and I uh, as a hobby thing, I'd be making lots of tools for games and stuff. So very big on Destiny and Battleborn. So I uh, helped, uh, I, I was very involved in those communities quite a lot. And particularly on the Bungie side, uh, they had at the time an unofficial API for Destiny 1. And I was there uh, reverse building documentation for their, their, their API. So all the, third, all the fans could then make tools for it. Um, and if you were to go to the official um, GitHub um, for their APIs now, there will actually be a, a link to my Twitter, you know, which is pretty cool. And, and I, I think I'm still owed a beer, although I might have caught up on that. Um, so yeah, helped with that. Um, I recently, uh, as of the uh, start of this year, I got contracted by Gearbox while I was in Darwin uh, to help work on their Borderlands 3 Twitch extension, uh, which has been really, really cool. And um, yeah, I've moved to Melbourne uh, late June um, to try and be more involved in the scene because I don't know if, if is there anyone here who's not Melbourne local? Okay, so pretty much everyone. Um, it's expensive and it's, it's also, you sort of feel like you're out of sight of the bubble. Um, so yeah, um, now with obviously a bit more money to sort of do things, move down, try to be more involved and um, I suppose contribute to the community as much as I can. Um, and yeah, and as of this year, alongside obviously the big project, oops, one too many, uh, uh, I've been doing some website for some of the small indie games. So if you happen to be interested in websites, you know, seven years plus, indie rates, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, so, and one other big important thing is I've just got off the Locomo Jam, if you've been following the Twitter hashtag at all. 36 hours from Brisbane through Sydney over two days, um, two trains. Uh, it's, and then, then we got held back by an hour because uh, one pers uh, there was a person on the train that unfortunately um, was in a medical emergency and passed away. And so we didn't get in until like very, very late. But um, yeah, it's, um, but yeah, so a bit, a bit tired, but I think, think, I think if you see anyone with the, uh, the uh, Twitch uh, Migwa pins, they're all local jammers, so just go up, say hi, and thank them for surviving. Because uh, it's I, I, for me particularly, it's the not having internet, or if, you, you basically get internet hotspots every so often whenever like you go into a train station. So it was it was pretty pretty bad, especially when you're like a Twitter person. You like, you know. So um, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's me. That that was like a we took that just as we arrived at the station. There'll probably be a ton of photos. And I believe there's a talk at PAX where they go through the whole thing. So if you want to learn any more about Local Jam, it was fun, um, a challenge, but yeah, fun things. Uh, important thing, um, while I was contracted by Gearbox, I did not represent Gearbox or 2K. So anything I say is um, my opinion. And while they, they're obviously aware of this talk and um, they've signed off on it. So, but um, yeah, if you want to ask specific things about the EGCAS, um maybe talk to me in person or um, this interview or some of these. Uh, so TwitchCon happened about a week ago or so and they, they actually did a whole bunch of interviews. So if you wanted more specific detail, um, go to those official sources rather than the contractor who's not NDA approved to just talk about things openly. So I, I will be talking about the extension, but I won't be going into detail like technical stuff or anything like that because, you know, big games, that sort of stuff. Um, so quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to go through a timeline of Twitch extensions. So who actually knows what a Twitch extension is? Okay, a few years. Okay, and so I suppose what about streaming? Who has done streaming or watches streaming gauges? Good, yeah, it's a good mix. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll go through, sort of go explain 
uh, what it is and sort of where it's sort of come from, just so, uh, if, if, particularly if you're not, not aware, you'll then have an understanding of what a Twitch extension is and why it's a really cool thing and you should probably be very keen on it, especially if you make games that you want to be streamed. Um, yeah, we're going to have a uh, look at some games that are doing it. Some games that uh, don't actually have Twitch extensions but have done some really cool interactive things that I'm going to try and talk about ways that an extension could make them better. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to... Uh, I, I wanted to have a, a demo uh, of an actual game showing how you could have like a streamer versus viewer sort of engagement. Um, but I'm going to work on having that ready after Miguel when it's not so busy and then I'll put that up to GitHub with all the source code. So if anyone's keen on that afterwards, um, yeah, give me a ping and I'll keep you in, in, in the loop. And then, yeah, afterwards Q&A and then a uh, particular challenge. So maybe start thinking about it while I talk. If you can think of a game that you think would be cool to be streamed but can't, uh, would like to see how um, interaction could be done in a streaming environment, you know, throw that at me and then I'll take up the challenge to try and think of solutions. I've got a few in my head. Um, one I'll just talk about now, or Goose Game. I've got a good idea for that, but um, just to keep on, 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 on uh, relevance, but uh, I'll talk about that later. So, quick timeline of Twitch. Uh, they moved from Justin TV, which is a little thing, back in 2011. Um, so, they're not that old. They're only like you know, eight, nine years old, if that. Um, and that's where they sort of became their own brand, and you started seeing like all the purple and that sort of stuff. In um, 2014, uh, February, uh, an anonymous Aussie programmer, as Wikipedia says it, um, came up with this idea of a social experiment where they basically um, hooked up a game. Who here knows what Twitch plays Pokemon is? Everyone? No? Yeah? All right, so there are some folks. I'll, I'll go through it. I won't waste. Go through it. So, yeah. Um, it was, it was one of those things. You know, if, you, if you're on social media, it's a thing that sort of happened and there was a lot of people involved. And... Um, you know, particularly when I submitted this talk, I was talking about Twitch extensions for Borderlands, and it was just like, um, and then I mentioned Twitch plays, and then it was a lot more clearer. Like, pe a lot more people know what Twitch plays is because it was one of those things that, like, everyone knows. It's like, like the Goose Game right now. Everyone knows about the Goose Game, and even if they're not into games and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, and and that sort of that sort of happened, and then in uh, 2017. Twitch in, introduced their extensions platform, so that's that's three years later. Um, so you know these things take time, and you know, I, I don't know if it was a result of things like the. Um, oops, just went back to uh, if it was a result of things like the uh, Twitch Plays Pokemon, or that they already worked on this. But I sort of feel like it probably had a very strong impact on them wanting to build this platform because uh, the one thing with Twitch Plays is that it was basically a hack, where it was hacking the platform in order to provide that interactivity with the viewers. Um, next big event, um, which is what it comes back into what I've been involved in, is uh, Borderland, oh, sorry, Gearbox. They did a gameplay reveal from Los Angeles. Um, I actually got the flyover, um, and I uh, got to be involved, and I've got a really cool little souvenir, where I've got a little Gearbox thing. You know, got, got treated like a, an employee, got to run around. Uh, that middle screenshot there, that's like one aisle of about like three or four. It was a huge like setup where they had all these machines set up the stream, like 200 machines, I think maybe 170 or so were actually streaming simultaneously. They had amazing internet. So, I mean, I, I was watching the uh, up and down. It was maybe about 20 second delay, but like that's all those people streaming at least 720p, I think, maybe 1080 Crazy stuff, and then we have Mel uh, Australia internet, not so great. Um, yeah, um, but a really big thing that also happened with this is that all the machines were set up to show off the Twitch extension. So all the streamers were then uh, loaded in, logged in, and then when they stream, the extension was then running along the stream as well. So it was like a big streaming event with a whole bunch of streamers, and um, you know it was really cool. So these are like version one. Um, uh, version one was very uh, trying to be very uh, like trying to compact it down because you know like all this UI was built for like 4K screens and then trying to compress that down to then fit on a a view which could be as small as like smaller than your phone. It was a real challenge. And so some of these early versions you're trying to be very compact. So uh, UI person, by the way, sort of very much my area. So. 
Um, yeah, and then uh, September 13, the game releases. We also released version two. Uh, fun thing is that there was an early access period for about one or two days. Um, and so the extension had to be running um, two days before launch. And um, I think some of the devs were up at like 3 a.m. Uh, Dallas time making sure that it was all up and running so that all the uh, early active streamers could then stream the extension and it's been really, really awesome. With the links, I have links, but I'll see how we go with time and then come back because one, uh, the setup's not very good for video in these things, so I don't want to risk it, but if I have time, I'll go back and show these links. But um, yeah, uh, that's, uh, I think the, it's, it's got like clips from different streamers uh, showing, uh, sh basically reacting to, like some of them, they'd never even seen some of the features. Um, some of them reacting to their, their viewers being total jerks and dropping grenades in their, their pinatas and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, if we get time, I'll show you the video of that later. Um, so yeah, rough timeline. This is um, obviously not a definitive timeline of Twitch extension, but these are what I sort of see as like very key points. Um, that has led to where Borderlands is now as it's basically, it's like the next step in where um, interactivity with streaming is going to be. Um, and yeah, so just, just a rough, rough evolution of things and um, moving on. Uh, we have uh, Twitch Play, so going back over it, uh, some stats that just, just pulling from Wikipedia, but um, we have, it was obviously very popular. It had an average viewership of 80,000 viewers um, over, I think it was about 16 continuous days. And that's how long it took them to beat the game um, controlling it. So for those that aren't aware, um, viewers could pass in commands into the chat for going up, down, left, right, if you know what a Game Boy is and how it works. And the, the most consistent option would be the option that the character do. So there's a lot of means where there's this little uh, Pokemon trainers walking left, right, up and down, and all that sort of stuff. You know, if you're in the memes, so it's 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 a it's a really big thing. And um, if you've never heard of it, you should definitely go check it out because um, yeah, a lot of people know about it, and it's a very different way to engage with streamers um, that really wasn't hap didn't happen before. And now there are lots of channels doing Twitch plays and that sort of stuff. Um, uh, a thing about this though was that um, if you look at the chat, so that's the actual chat. Um, I think at one point they actually moved to like an IRC channel. Um, does anyone know what IRC is? Yeah, some, not many. So it's like an old school chat. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not an expert, but it, it's basically like, it's almost like command line chat where you can talk to people and the uh, streamer had hooked it up to then talk to the modded emulator that's running the game streaming. So it's, it's very complicated um, to then, uh, so that someone to dissipate once they took it out of the chat, that means they've got to then install IRC, you've got to know how to use it, they've then got to um, interact with it, and that uh, separates it from that experience of just watching it on the stream. Um, and yeah, as I said, with because uh, it's an emulator, uh, obviously uh, an actual Game Boy, you can't um, mod it or anything. So running emulators, emulators are kind of like a gray area, so you're already in a weird spot, and then who, who here knows how to mod a ROM of a game from um, early 90s, I think, or late 90s? One, one person? <laughs> one or two? Oh, two, yeah. So it, it's not exactly a skill. And ev even like, um, I don't know if, if folks have what, seen much modding, but modding is not for the faint of heart. It's often quite complicated. Like you might be modifying files, making copies of them so you don't corrupt your builds the games and it's a lot more complicated with a ROM because it's all in a package file which is in, in assembly so it's not something you want to be modifying um, you know so but you know this guy did it and it was really really cool so with the streaming revolution um, uh, extensions introduced basically uh, a, another layer that sits on top of the stream so you've got you got the stream you've got the twitch UI you know for control in the feed and then you've got a layer Bouncing. Um, it, uh, a layer of interactivity which could um, uh, the viewers could control. So if you look at the first one, they, they actually created like an interface where each of those dots is like a hotspot, so like a heat map of where people are touching the screen. And then the viewer could sort of, but it's a bit weird because the streamer can't see that unless they're watching the stream as well. So it's, it's and it sort of lives outside um, the experience. So um, it's, it's not really integrated into a game or anything like that. 
The middle one, I think, is your, your typical MOBA. I don't quite know the game offhand, but it, I think it might have been like a League of Legends or one of those ones. But the um, main thing is that it's pulling API data from the game. Uh, who's familiar with APIs? Anyone? A little bit? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Fun thing. Uh, yeah, it's pulling pulling data that's been exposed by the game um, through APIs and then been displayed on the screen so that way uh, viewers can see this information without the um, streamer having to then bring up the menus to show it. Um, it's often uh, a bit behind um, and it, uh, it, it, it can be quite detailed, particularly these MOBAs where you, like, you look at that, I mean, that's a pretty big screen and you probably still can't even see what it says almost. It's, it's that... And, and imagine that on a, a little tiny, if, if you haven't got it full screen, you've got this little, little tiny video on your, your, your web browser and it's trying to layer all this detailed information on, a, on, a, on the little tiny screen. And yeah, the last one, Destiny, uh, it's a third party extension where they're actually pulling stats that this third party website is actually um, accumulated by pulling every single activity from the game and then building their own stat data. So it's not actually official Bungie data, so just a few. And uh, here's a few other examples um, pulled from, so there's a, there's a game jam sort of happening, or the dev jam uh, hackathon from Twitch, and so these are some of the ones they listed, except for Bungie, because apparently Bungie doesn't count, but I put it there because I like Bungie. And yeah, so some of the other ones, Overwolf is sort of like a third party that they basically work with developers to then provide um, their data, so uh, they often will have uh, unique access to data that's not... Um, exposed by developers through APIs and that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, you have a few other ones like Battlegrounds, they have their own API. Blizzard, obviously, with all their games, they have APIs and that. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, APIs, they're kind of a thing that you don't really see much, don't even know about, because they're often third party, other AAA exclusive things. Like, you don't see very many. Um, indie games that would have APIs often, or, or they wouldn't even have a reason to have them. So it's, it's not something that's um, very useful for an extension developer who is a web dev, they don't have access to the game. Um, and with modding of games, most modding is PC exclusive. So if you think of Minecraft, it has a ton of mods. Uh, there are actual extensions that use mods, um, which is really cool. But I mean, how many mods can you mod? I don't, I don't know this. Can you actually mod Minecraft on a console? Does it have a way? I mean, are th um, not specifically uh, Minecraft, but it's there are some games. Yeah. Yeah, American Elder Scrolls in particular, they're trying to get mods on the console. Yeah, but it's, it's not a very common thing, though, is it? It's not common. Yeah, so it's like you know, it, it very restricts what you can do um, with an extension because you then basically got to create like a, a whole separate experience on top of the game as opposed to. Um, integrate into the game. So let me get to Borderlands, where uh, this was a, a com uh, uh, an effort between multiple teams to, uh, you know, so we've got the actual the game developers, the online service team, that Shift um, for, oh, sorry, no, Spark, and obviously web developers like myself and Rick Casey, who's from DIM, if anyone plays Destiny, he made a really cool third-party auto manager. Um, and yeah, we worked together and we built this experience that is actually integrated into the game. Um, does, has anyone actually played Borderlands out of curiosity? Okay, cool. All right, so I'm not just, yeah. So it, it's one of my test questions is to sort of see if people even know what Borderlands is because then I know where I've got to start because uh, it's hard to, it's, it's, particularly like things like this and APIs, it's very hard to talk about it if you're not even involved in the game and that's one of the problems um, with this sort of thing is it's, it's very hard to understand unless you actually see it. Um, and I'll sort of go on that a bit later. Um, so yeah, so some of the key things it could do, you could view the uh, view of the streamer's profile information. So the first screen, we've got uh, the overview, so like their, their gear, their stats, their character level, their name, lots of stuff, what game modes they're playing. Second one, we've got the inventory, so you can quickly go in and look at their items, which is really good for streamers because they don't have to stop the game, um, bring up the menus, which um, were you know, a bit slow at release as well, but you know, as it is. And then the skill tree, which is their, their main RPG component where you that's custom builds for each streamer. Um, and a cool thing there, if you see the little cog, you click on that, it'll actually open up on the official skill tree builder with the build pre-built, so that way viewers could then start customizing that build from the streamer. Um, just a little cool uh, thing. 
Um, and then it had these things called interactive events. So the first event was a red chess. So for those that aren't familiar with Borderlands, you have loot chests that are in the game, you find them. And when the streamer opens them, uh, an event triggers on the stream. Um, viewers can then go into a poll. The viewers that, um, uh, so it, it picks, picks a percentage of winners. I think it's 25%. I've heard that number said, don't call me to it, but yeah, 25% winners. They then get to pick an item from that chess and is then scaled to their character's level. So when they log into the game later, they'll have that loot. And cool part of the marketing component of Borderlands is that this was available before the game was even announced. So people could start earning loot like uh, back in May, so again, came in September 30th, so several months where people were basically earning loot before they'd even got access to the game. So incentive to sort of, you know, pre-order and then get all their cool loot, especially if the streamers then got really cool legendaries and stuff. But I um, don't know how many dropped during the uh, early streaming days. Um, uh, next event was the pinata event. Um, it's not a very good screenshot, but this is the screenshot pulled from the actual extension. So um, if I can show the video later, I'll show it in action. But um, it, it sort of looks like a Fortnite pinata. It's obviously a, a play on that. So it's a little pinata that spawns whenever the streamer levels up or gains a guardian rank, which is like the end game progression system. And then viewers can then vote on what, the, what it contains. And then it'll sit there taunting them in the voice of Claptrap um, one of the in-game characters, and then the streamer can punch it, and then, for instance, it might contain a grenade, and so if they're in close because they have to punch it, big boom, and they take damage, and then they hate their viewers forever, um, which is really cool to watch on uh, reaction videos, so yeah, if you can see the videos later. Uh, the third one, which has been really, really cool, is the Badass event. So in a lot of games, you'd have a Badass enemy, which is a bit tougher, more, more health, and that, but um, what happened here is when these badasses would spawn, uh, there'd be a quick poll. One of the viewers would then get picked, and their name would sit above the badass's name. So instead of seeing like badass electro skag, which I think was that, that one was called, it'd be low lines is the badass, and then they're fighting the streamer, you know. And then the, all the viewers then have the opportunity to then vote on what the badass does. So uh, a couple example of attacks was um, they could level up. Uh, the badass. So I think they level up three, four times, which at that point is higher than the streamer's current level. Um, they could heal the badass, which in the early uh, launch days was pretty OP, particularly on certain. There was there was a particular enemy type where once you leveled it up and healed it enough, they were, it was literally invincible, and the, even even really good streamers could not beat it. So um, it's is pretty full on. Um, oh, and I think I didn't mention with the this one. You could also give the streamer uh, bonuses, so a tour package, that's one of the manufacturer brands. They could um, give basically the streamer loot, um, which, which is often higher level than what they currently had. So I actually tested it, got to test it on myself because I finally had a PC build. And uh, yeah, I got like a blue legendary at, at like the start of the game. It's like, oh cool, I can use this better than my white stuff that I got. So it's, um, it's, it's really, really cool. And um, yeah. That, that's a video that they made to like the version 2 trailer with all a whole bunch of Twitch streamer interactions. Um, I'll play that later if we get time. Uh, so moving on to some other games that have done some really cool things. Uh, so Rage 2, they actually launched um, around the time when the uh, extension was about to be announced um, for Borderlands. And they made this uh, experience where, has anyone actually played Rage 2? Yeah, I haven't played it myself, but the way I understand it is when the um, the stream would go down, a little UI pop up where they could do like a like a quick time event and then heal the streamer, um, which was really cool. Um, although I, I think there were some issues, like for instance, uh, I, I, I assume I sort of expect that a streamer would be good enough that they wouldn't die very often, so it wouldn't be a very often loop. Whereas a badass, for instance, that spawns pretty often if you're running around in like hard mode. So um, yeah, and uh, one thing that's probably not a very good experience on the web is that it actually played sound effects when you're actually interacting with it. So if you've got it streaming and then it's playing all these sound effects on top, it might not be desirable. And I think by default, Twitch will actually block um, audio. So it, like it's, it's not something as part of the normal loop. Um, another cool one that I've heard about was Stardew Valley. So it lets you actually control the weather of the game. I told that to my little brother who plays Stardew, and he's like, why would you do that? Um, which like, well, I thought, well, that's really cool, changing the weather. But I suppose if it's a, a farming simulator or something, like if you're controlling the weather, you'd totally mess up the thing. And I mean, 
the, the thing with a lot of the ball lens one is that they created chaos, which was a really cool uh, dynamic to have during a stream, um, but maybe not so much in a game, because I, I suppose you're not really going to have high action in a, a, a game like Stardew Valley. So, but really cool thing, and I believe this is an actual Twitch extension they made. So there's very few, um, particularly indie sort of scale games, where they've actually built extensions. So it was really cool to see that. Um, maybe it might have been cool to see some other interaction they could have done with the game, um, more, more engagement. Um, this one, Dead Cells. Has anyone played Dead Cells? Yeah, a couple. Did you know that it had Twitch integration? Yeah. So you see that, that article there? That was like the only article I'd, I could find about it. I, could, I looked on their website. I couldn't even actually see um, any mention to this. They don't actually have a Twitch extension, but what they've done is they've actually um, built a whole bunch of really, really cool things into the game um, that if you're playing on PC, so exclusive to PC because of the way it works, um, you, you can in engage with the streamer. Uh, there's uh, an actual video included in that thing. It's like several hours. So if you want, ever wanted to sort of um, see uh, some of the things it did. So just going through quickly, uh, the first one, uh, you could spawn a bird companion that was nicknamed Captain Chicken. And um, it could have the, the, the viewer's name, similar thing to the badass. Uh, it can attack enemies with lightning, and it could also heal the streamer. So it was like a little companion that would follow you around each level, and the viewers had some control over how it would work. Um, next little cool thing it did was that while you were streaming, there'd be extra loot chests that would spawn in the game. These chests were obviously themed to be Twitch, and the viewers would then spam commands to then crack open the chests, so then the streamers could then get those loot. Um, the next one was uh, each time the level would start up, they could vote on modifiers. Um, this is actually something that um, I think a lot of people actually requested with Borderlands because in Borderlands they actually have modifiers and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, they could set modifiers whether you know they, it might be positive or negative modifiers that then the, the stream would then have to play the level through as that. So it adds that extra sort of dynamic of take control of the stream. And um, one of the other parts of that taking control is um, Dead Cells has some RPG elements. So whenever they get an upgrade, the viewers then get a chance to vote on which upgrades. And I don't think they get to pick the final choice, but they get to limit it to down to two choices that the then streamer has to pick. So it's, it's sort of like you're more involved in how that experience is. And it's, if you think about it, it's a lot like Twitch Plays Pokemon, where people were actually controlling the way the game would play through, you know, and you, you know, you'd gain, um, you, you know, you, you, you'd check what you do next by you know, controlling the streamer. Um, and the last thing it did, which is kind of neat, is uh, I think particularly when you beat bosses, uh, the viewers have a chance to then spam commands that would uh, bring up little congratulations and you have their little name on it. So, you know, like, Lowlands congratulated, woot, you know, which is, you know, really cool and neat and it's... Um, but if, if you were to make that unique, that would be a whole scary process of censoring and limiting that to the, the, the different things. But I think those are just preset commands. Um, uh, but yeah, all of this was done through the chat command. So what that means, much like the Twitch plays, is that the chat then stops being a chat and just becomes a spam channel. So you can't use it for chat anymore. Um, which is one of the nice things with the Borderlands extension is that um, we can, uh, it, it separates it so that all that, that interactivity is happening on the actual stream as an overlay, and then the chat can just become chat. So then the streamer can actually talk to their chat while the, they're also engaging. So um, that's one of the cool things about extensions is that it separates it out. Um, I really, you know, if I ever got the chance, I'd very much like to have a go at building some of these experiences that Dead Cells has done as a Twitch extension because as, as I, Asked. Not many people even knew, or maybe no one even knew that it had a integration, and it's limited to PC. You know, if if this was you know, they, they, it, with a Twitch extension, you can make this work across console platforms as well. You know, like there's like once once it's it's set up, you know, it, it, it you would not be restricted by platform. Um, and while Warlands doesn't quite have uh, console support yet, because it's still, you know, it's it's in the later patch, it will support console, PC, and any future platforms. It will have um, with the Twitch integration, so, um, which is really cool because the last thing you want is for something really cool to happen and everyone's like, 
why can't I do it on my platform? You know, and um, one of the early feedback we got with the ball lens extension was that it didn't work on mobile. So if you're watching a stream on your mobile phone through the Twitch app, there was no integration, which is something we got out for version two, um, which has been really cool. So that means everyone uh, who could stream the game would be able to interact with it in some form um, and see all that information. One that someone mentioned to me in passing, which was really cool, is one called Cluster Truck. Uh, again, not a Twitch extension, but it gave the, uh, the, the devs could actually log in to a game and then sort of modify the game. Um, so th this stream there, they're, they're actually playing the game and all of a sudden the gravity goes away and all the trucks go purple and like they're actually talking with the streamer. This would be a very cool concept if you then change it from the devs having control to the viewers having control. Then you're talking with your viewers and then they're modifying the game using some sort of interface, you know. That would be a very cool sort of interaction. Um, and it's just, yeah, some of these ideas that I've, I've heard about that are just really, really cool. And, you know, if, if you did that in an extension sense, it would be, you know, it, it, could, it could be really, really interesting to see how that would sort of work. Um, but, yeah, sort of going, going forward, um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do um, with streaming. Uh, it's very, uh, very new, and um, you're probably going to see a lot more AAA companies starting to do it because um, since since Borderlands 3, because they sort of, they've sort of been like one of the first first ones that um, that have sort of happened. Uh, yeah, more more AAA's will do it, and we'll probably uh, I, I'd kind of like people to sort of think more about how their game could be streamed and what sort of interactions could happen because and and also talk about it like like i like i showed a few indie examples there you know these were not very well talked about and like promote those things talk about them because um particularly now with these big triple a ones like ball lens there's going to be you know folks looking out for the next cool little integration thing you know and um you know it, it even like the goose game is being streamed at the moment there's an opportunity there where that could have been had integration, you know, and I mean, not that that particular game needs it, but, you know, there, there, there are games where uh, the experience is a lot different once it's streamed as opposed to just playing it separately. Um, and there's a lot of streamers that obviously want to play the games and have that engagement. And they're always looking for ways to have more interaction with their viewers. So uh, they've all been very excited with like Borderlands and they sort of expect other big games to start doing that. Um, Twitch at the moment is doing a hackathon, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm attempting to participate in it, but uh, it's currently Games Week, so I've got like about a week after this to finish off my entry. But um, uh, the, the, the theme this year is Game Match, and what that means is it's, it's something like Borderlands, where it's specifically um, interacting with the game in some form, whether it's APIs or that it's an actual game mod or an actual game which is actually built with Twitch extensions. So um, it'd be some definitely to sort of pay attention to and sort of see what folks come up with. Um, I've been sort of in the Discord, sort of following along, sort of seeing what people have been coming up with. Um, there's been a few devs that do no actual game devs, so they might be able to make some really cool things. But for the most part, they're using already existing APIs um, or uh, making some sort of custom thing that doesn't really directly interact with the game. So, but yeah, that's it's. It's, it's just what's, you know, like what's going to be happening more often is you're going to see a lot more of this interaction. Um, this is something I wanted to do, um, actually do a demo of it, but um, I haven't quite got it ready. So I wanted to show an example of a game where uh, the actual experience is directly with the streamers and the viewers, where they're actually directly playing off of each other. So in this sense, so this is what the streamer would see. It's just a little simple game um, where you have these, these mice that are running between the bushes. They can only you know, interact with the mice when they move between. So you've got, a, it's like a, you know, like a duck hunt or something where you're trying to get the mice before they get away. And then on the viewer side, they can then see where they're actually going to spawn and where they currently are. So they have this information that the streamer doesn't. And so they could then team up and then sort of try and trick the streamer because like if they were to go for the, the black ones, for instance, they would lose points. And so it's this idea where the, um, the viewers are then competing with a streamer in a, in a way that you can't really do at the moment because of, you know, like if you're watching a stream, you're not um, directly engaging. 
Um, there are some potential pitfalls of this because um, with streaming you obviously have lag, but there are ways you go around it where like, the spawn timers would then account for the delay, and that's something that you know we've also had to do with the Borderlands extension where. Um, we account for the delay so that, like, for instance, when the loot chest spawns, the viewers don't actually see the UI until after it actually shows on screen. So even though it happened 10, 15 seconds ago, it still feels like it's happening right away. And the, it, there's, there's data that you can actually pull from Twitch to actually do this. So you can actually do a kind of real time, even though it's not truly real time. Um, and yeah, uh, what I'm going to do is after Games Week, I'm going to do the opposite little prototype and put this code up on GitHub. So if anyone's really keen on sort of seeing how this would work in Unity sense, so it had both the extension and the Unity side, so that way you could then sort of see how you do it, how you talk to Twitch through their um, their web sockets and that sort of stuff. Um, I wasn't going to go too technical because I wasn't sure how um, how like, how many folks who have done web development? A few. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, if you want to learn more, come talk to me because I'm very happy to talk about this stuff. And, um, yeah, so I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll sort of give you pointers on how to get started if you are keen on doing this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's been interesting with the big one, but uh, with, with the big, the big uh, Borderlands game. But um, yeah, I mean, you definitely get your streamers in and then testing out the experience to make sure that they can, um, you know, you, you, you get get them involved. Like, uh, I don't know if folks are following many of the big companies, but they are actually having streamers come in and test the game and that sort of stuff. So um, it's definitely something. And and the thing is, like, some of the some of the experiences like the Badass event, that actually changed a bit after Streamer Feedback um, playing it. So they actually adapted it um, and then it, it, it got suggestions through them. Is that sort of... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of streamers already willing to throw in their ideas, so they're very keen to be involved. Um, it's, yeah, I suppose that's a that's a hard question to sort of think about because, um, from my perspective, this is sort of like the first real extension um, that sort of uh, sort of had like a lot of components to sort of make it all happen, and I have not seen very many indie sort of or, or middle sort of happen yet, so. I'm, yeah, I suppose that's maybe something they have to sort of wait to sort of see how it sort of comes along. Uh, you put your hand up first. Um. Yeah, um, sure. Can you talk about some of the uh, features of the Borderlands quick integration that you uh, end up not shipping in the final version and why they didn't work? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything that we haven't shipped yet. Just stuff we haven't made yet. No, I mean more like stuff, ideas that you tried but decided against. Um, I think real-time streaming with the badass event because uh, and that was something the streamers very quick. Is like, can, can we actually have like real time where they're actually controlling the badass on the fly? But as I says, there's a, a delay with the streaming, so you have to account for that as an expected thing. And until we have amazing internet across the board where there is like no lag between upload and download of the stream. All experiences are going to have some sort of delay, so yeah, real time badasses, I suppose, is one one example. But um, yeah, other than that, we pretty much have shipped everything that we wanted to. I mean, you know, in including including um, this is this is the thing for me, the skill tree. Um, it actually has update like a refresh animate. Like, <laughs> if you let me, I go crazy with UI design, and I, I like trying to like get it as close as I could to how it looked in game with all the animations and stuff. So yeah, I mean we got everything in there. Um so but um yeah. So I have seen a, a few like very I think very technical savvy uh streamers do their own yeah. uh, stuff. Like uh, one one of my most impressed uh session was there was a streamer doing his 
got on stream, and then he just let his streamer, uh, let his viewer uh, buy lands in his city, and yeah. maybe like throw meteors and, and tornadoes into his city. And uh, I guess my question is, where where do you usually find, you know, I, I, I mean, I think there must be a lot of stream, uh, streamers doing this kind of stuff out there, but mm. where do you look for those resources if you want to maybe say, I'm a developer, I want to De definitely, um, I suppose, approach Twitch, um, and if you need context, I could probably point you to them. But um, I, even like some of those cool things, like the cluster truck, that was something I did not know about. No one else I knew knew about until I mentioned someone in the Melbourne space. You know, like so. There's a, there's a lot of cool things that probably I don't even know about happening, and it's just trying to figure out how to find them and sort of talk about it. So I mean, the the thing with um, extensions at the moment is, from what I've seen is it's quite often um, a, dev a web developer wanting to build for a game they're really a big fan of. And so they are working in a, in a third party sense where they have no engagement with the devs at all and so they're trying to build upon that. So it's, it's a very restrictive sort of thing. Like even with the, the Destiny stuff, I know some of the devs, but there's, it's not like I can sort of say, hey, can you add this feature to the Des Destiny game, you know, so that we can do this cool thing. Some things happen, which is cool, but it's, you know, you're not integrated into the actual development of the game, so it's yeah, you're restricted to what comes out. So, but um, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, I've, there was actually one of the games I did a website work for, the Wayward Strand. Um, one I th thought would be really cool is if, you know, while, while they're watching the stream, because it, if, if, has anyone heard of Wayward Strand at all? It's going to be at the PAX Indie Showcase. Go check it out. It's really awesome. Yeah, so, but um, yeah, so it's, it's a historical game, and, yep, um, and uh, it's, uh, you could have like, you know, maybe maybe they could be clickable in areas where they could bring up law about these scenes because it's historical. You know, that'd be a really cool thing. Um, where, you, yeah, you, but the tricky thing there would be making sure that the extension knows what it's currently looking at because there has to be some sort of information. So that that's the one tricky thing. Which, depending on how you expose that data, you could totally do. You know, if you map like show up like a, a grid map of the screen or something. But um, yeah, I haven't actually seen anything myself. Um, but yeah, so um, just one thing, when, when I uh, did this talk, I went and asked some Twitch and they gave me all the things that I knew. So most of the ones I've shown are ones that Twitch has actually given me and then I've tried to find some other cool ones. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of cool things, but not a lot of people know about them and so it's trying to find them and then promote them because they're really cool. What Dead Cells, that, that's some really cool stuff that they're doing and it's just a shame that it's sort of exclusive to PC and not many people know about it. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, so two things. Um, going back to that lore idea is the game has that little notebook with a little list of tasks. That'd be good to just have it sort of come out as like a little drawer as they're viewing. So the streamer could just play and the viewers could always see what they're currently doing. But another cool thing, and it'd, be, it'd probably be a pretty big dev endeavor, is to have sort of like a lot of Nintendo games, we have like a ghost goose. So it's a goose that is like the goose, but it has limited functionality. So for instance, it might be able to quack or something and they might be able to position it. And then you could then basically play two player with your viewers where they get to vote on what the goose does and then the streamers could then talk with them. And so, you know, you could be, um, you know, you could set up things where like you, you want to distract this dude by having the goose quack over there where you're hiding in the bushes. So that way, instead of having to do that all yourself, you get your viewers to do that and you're the goose running around, you know, so it's sort of like creating like a two player with your viewers, um, which would work even with the delay because of, you know, like it's, it's a voting system where, and a lot of the uh, Borderlands things, they're, they're based upon polls, where all the interaction is done by doing a poll and then reacting from that. So that, that was my ideas for Goose Goose. So.
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like I, I imagine that you might have it sort of like where the streamer could then walk the goose around, you know, like set them in a spot and then the viewers are then vote on what it does, whether it be a quack or maybe maybe you can get get it to hold onto a target or something, you know, like some, some you know, like I haven't completed the game yet, I've been playing it on my train jam, but I ran out of battery, so I didn't get to finish it. Um, but I got up to the, uh, I think it was a bar, so I think that's the last section, at least as far as the notes go. But um, yeah, like it's, I, I, I definitely think you could create a very different sort of experience, because um, I just thought it was really cool that people were actually streaming the game, and it's like, wow, it's missed opportunity that you could maybe do, I mean, you know, but uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, So this, this sort of goes back on the API sort of thing where um, Twitch has APIs, right? And the key way that um, games will generally talk to them is through WebSockets. So as long as you know how to set up a WebSocket, you can then start talking to Twitch. And um, that they also have APIs, so that's your, your normal um, REST APIs as well. But the sockets in particular are really big. And it's something that I think uh, Borderlands is using, which isn't out yet, but they've announced, is the meta tag APIs, which at the moment they're only using for, um, so when, when you're streaming the game, it'll actually set the tags and all, all the, 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 the stream of what, what level, or what, what, what mode you're playing, what your character is, and like, so that way if someone wants to quickly find a streamer that's playing modes, for instance, they'd be able to just look at the tags and it's all automated, so the streamer doesn't have to do any of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it might do some other really cool things in the future, so. But um, yeah, at the moment it's the web sockets, and it's just yes, if you know how to use a web socket and how to talk to that. I mean, all the all the um, uh, engines have some way to do web web um, calls, right? Uh, this is something I'm going to experiment with, with when I work on a little text demo. But yeah, time. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, just find me. Um, Got Borderlands on, so it's the one time I can wear this stuff and feel okay because I'm in the game credits. So, <laughs> oh, and um, there's also a talk tomorrow. You should probably go to it. Just you know. <laughs>